a lot of times I'm asked, like, what's one of the best things I've ever done for my professional learning? And, you know, people will say like, oh, I got onto Twitter or I went to this conference. I saw the speaker, whatever. And I think a lot of those things have had a positive impact on me. But hands down, it is not even close. The best thing that I've ever done for my own professional learning was I started my blog. And the reason I, I say that is because the process of active reflection has really made me look back so that I can move forward. And I, I've often talked about this idea of 360 degree learning that when you know you're writing a reflection that the whole world can see, you start thinking about what is the thinking that could be challenged here and you try to address it beforehand. And I remember this quote I shared in the Innovator's Mindset by, I think his name is Clive Thompson. And it goes something like this, that anyone can win an argument inside their head, but when you face an audience, you have to be truly convincing. And I, I love that thought of really kind of understanding through our own reflection, not only do we become better, but the people around us become better because they benefit from our growth and development. And this is why I was so excited to have Jamie Fowler White on the podcast today. Uh, she talks so much about reflection and how to implement this into our everyday practice and how we actually build in time to our school day, not only for our staff, but our, for students to actively reflect and how that is such a crucial element of teaching. You are gonna love this podcast. It is so beneficial and I actually encourage you um, to, to write, to do a podcast, to do um, you know a reflection after about the podcast because I know you'll take way more out of it if you take the time to reflect, not just consume it, but what do you create with it? This is something I think I would love to see more happening you know, in my own learning. I'm trying to do this a lot more with what I read, what I consume is actually what do I take in and how do I actually kind of create my own connections to this? And Jamie has so many great ideas. And Thank you so much for being here. I, I absolutely love this podcast. I just finished recording it. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Curl. So welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am really excited today to have Jamie Fowler White. Uh, Jamie and I have been spending the last 30, 40 minutes together. We recorded another podcast. Uh, she talks a lot about reflection. Uh, not only does she talk about it, she actively models it in this process, which I, I do love. You can see the expertise in it. Uh, she also she has a book uh, out with her husband uh, that's just released. It's called The Labyrinth of Leadership, Navigating Your Way Through the Maze. And you can actually check out uh, uh, her, all, her other book, Education, Educator Reflection Tips, volume number one. We're going to talk about both of these. Uh, in the podcast, I have like just love getting to know you. This has been awesome, and so I know that people listening to this are going to love getting to know you too. So, Jamie, if you could just tell everyone a little bit about who you are, what you do today, and how you got there, it's a great place to start. Oh, awesome! All right, um, Jamie Fowler White. Uh, I am a 25 year educator. Spent 10 years in the classroom, 10 years as an instructional coach. This is my fifth year in administration. I currently. I serve as the principal of Simi Hills Elementary in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, along with that, I, I write um, books um, because it's my form of self-care, along with book number six. Um, I, my husband and I own a um, consulting company, Digital PD for You. And uh, other than that, I mean, I just... Um, other than everything. I don't know. I don't know. Yes. I'm a wife. I'm a mother. Uh, my son is actually uh, a freshman this year. Uh, he attends Cornell College in Mount Vernon, Iowa. <laughs> oh, wow. Really? Oh, really? Mount Vernon. How far? I, I was going to say, how many stop signs away is Mount Ooh, Vernon? Ooh, it's nine <laughs> hours. A whole, a whole bunch of stops <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah. so that, so it, that actually, like when you're when you're talking about kind of your experience, one, I'm I'm curious about this because uh, I had a, kind of an experience with this too. When you were okay, so when you were instructional coach, so obviously you have that skill set, that understanding of instructional coaching, but now you're a principal. So I'm 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 almost certain you obviously do instructional coaching as a principal. Yeah. 
I do. <laughs> so, so here's here's kind of the thing. Do you find that just you being a principal actually gets more buy-in to some of the suggestions you make as opposed to when you're an instructional coach? Because I actually found when I would like work side by side with my colleagues and say like, hey, here's some stuff, you know, to consider technology. It was like, this is kind of optional. Like they, whatever. And it was like, like there's a lot of pushback. But when I was a principal and not said you have to do this, it, it, it was like more embraced. And I felt like just kind of the notion that I, that I was the boss, right? Even though I wasn't acting bossy, but it, it was like, I'm like, I'm not really changing my approach, but my title has changed. Is what's going on here? What what's different? Is it me? Is it my title? Like, how do you did any of that change for you? Like, or and maybe maybe I just sucked it. <laughs> I just sucked at what I was doing, and uh, I needed to. Be, I don't know. Um, like, I'm feeling like that. Well, I don't know. My journey was a little different. Um, yeah. When I was an instructional coach, um, only one of those ten years did was there an administrator between me and the principal, and right. so. Um, in my role as an instructional coach, I also served as an administrator because there oh, okay. oh, no. wasn't an assistant principal. My principal would leave the building, uh, leave the country because he actually left the country. I actually had to run the building. So oh, okay. for me, I was actually seen yeah, as an administrator also. each of yeah, those years. Also. So maybe, so yeah, I can see it depends on, I guess, how the uh, principal um, talks about you, right. I guess, with the teachers, um, because if um, you're seen as equals, then um, whatever you tell the teachers, they'll actually see it as this is something that the principal would really want us mm. to be doing. So I would say it was not something you were doing. Mm -hmm. It was how you were perceived by the staff and that had to come from the head. Um, mm. um, and I would say that it makes it makes the most difference. Um, I mm -hmm. have a coach and don't have an assistant principal. So right. she serves in dual roles as an administrator. And I had to make sure that my staff saw her as that. It's like yeah. we are one. And so when my admin team tells you something, know that we all right. have already discussed it and this is what it's going to be. Don't come and ask me. Just mm -hmm. do it. Right. Like, um, but it has to it has to be rolled out like that because if it's not, right. it makes your job really hard because people will be saying, okay, well, George told me to do this, but Principal right. uh, Matthews may not want me to do it that way. Um, and so oh. it, that uh, is something you probably could think on it, you know, reflect on it and see. Well, well it's actually when you said about kind of seeing like seeing yourself as equals through that process. When I was when I was a principal, um, we actually we had like four basic teams that led professional learning uh, initiatives in our school. And when I say teams, every person and I, I'm not talking just teaching staff, I'm talking uh, custodial staff, uh, support staff, they were they were on one of those teams. And it was like, based on our last podcast, I know, I know you'll appreciate this. It wasn't on the team that you were felt your weakest at. It was like, what were you mo most passionate about? What did you feel you had a gift in? Because that was easier. You know, if you're excited about it, it, it that's like a really way to develop strengths. And I and it wasn't like, okay, so I'm the principal. And here's the four teams. I was actually an equal member of one of those teams as well. And so like, I like awesome. we input and stuff like that too. And so when we had a conversation, so I, I think there is um, maybe an appreciation of that modeling. Cause I, I know that that approach has been taken um, by other schools, but it's like basically the admin team up here and then the teams like, and then it's like, you know, there's a disassociation. Whereas I'm like spending time learning from the other teams and not, and not being principal at the time. I'm just a, someone who's picking stuff up, trying to learn from the experts in the building. And I th and I think people appreciated that, that I also knew when to step back and say like, hey, like, I'm, why are you asking me this question? This, that's the, that's the, the gifted group in this area. Like, that's who it is, right? So it wasn't the principal leading the way, it was the experts in the building. In, in and that's, what, that's the way it should be. Yeah. 
Um, and and your staff were probably happier because you actually um, sh- you modeled for them what it looked like to be right. vulnerable and say, "I it's okay to not know. Right. I'm not the expert in everything, but in the room, there is an expert. And so we need to use them for their gifts. Yeah, I'm not afraid to do that. I did it last week. I actually had uh, my math content lead, lead collaborative planning mm-hmm. um, because I had watched instruction and um, and I told her, I said, I need for you to model um, the problem that I saw you do when I walked in, um, where you wrote out um, the multiples on the side and showed your children how to divide and knowing that they didn't know their multiplication facts and right. how you use addition to make that happen. And then you just show we were doing a vertical planning. I said, I need you to show every teacher how to do that right there. I love right. that. Yes. So, so here, here's actually, I know I'm like going to out myself here. So the so the the misconception about the way that what you just said and what, the way I approached it is like oh he put his ego aside no 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 I have a very big ego and I need I need to like so like the the thing is my ego thrives on doing very well and so if I was like the all knowing but I didn't actually know our school didn't do well which actually would make me look bad too so I'm like no this actually does feed my ego like it's kind of like. Do you, do you know, I, like that's yes. you know, when you're listening to that too, it's like a lot of people think, oh, he's just putting his ego aside. And no, 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 it's actually, it's actually very there. Like yeah. I need to do really well. And as a principal, the way I do really well is the people I serve do really well. Exactly. And, and so, <laughs> so like that, so like a lot of that, but I think that's, I, I remember talking about, um, there's kind of like, there's, uh, there's a fine line between confidence, arrogance, and you know, uh, arrogance, confidence, and like insecurity. And like, you want to be at that confident level Mm -hmm. insecurity. You tend to like pretend, you know, everything. Right. And arrogance is like, you know, it's a a different level of that too. So you listen, I don't know. You're like doing some like mind tricks on me. Like I know you're doing all this. We're just having a conversation. Right. <laughs> like, like, you're like very focused on reflection, and yeah, I'm like like going. Through you're reflecting. Yes, you're <laughs> reflecting. Yeah. I know it's my gift, right? I, it is your gift. <laughs> so hey, so I'm going to ask you. So tell us a little bit about. Um, so I'm looking at Educator Reflection Tips Volume Number One. How many volumes are there so far released? Uh, two so far. Uh, okay, so, working on three. Yeah, so tell us about how this, like, uh, what, what the, like, you have volume number one, like, how, what, how are the books structured? Like, what is the process of those books, and what are they? Oh, like? yeah. So um, I'm sure you probably figured out that I'm not, uh, I don't fit into the mold. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I write books that you can read um, one chapter at a time, any chapter, without actually starting at the beginning. Right. So, so none of the books. Um, that I write, do you read cover to cover? You actually can look at the table of contents and say, oh, I need um, some tips on how to get my students to engage. Um, And so there's a tip on student engagement. Mm -hmm. It talks about the research. It uh, gives reflective questions. And then it gives like action steps or next steps, tools for you to use to get your students uh, to engage or to use the research-based information within the tip. Um, I talk about just teaching mathematics, what it looks like for children to productively struggle. Are you Mm -hmm. saving them or do you actually allow them to think through um, their problems, uh, unpacking standards, um, talked about um, infusing gamification, uh, techniques into instruction because our children will play a game for hours and hours and hours and there's nothing tangible that they're receiving except mm-hmm. for just getting to another level and so like infusing things like that um and um i put them together into uh some competencies so that may be an instructional competency there may be uh technology based competencies mm-hmm. and so they'll flow if you want to read the book from cover to cover but you could essentially just read chapter five and say mm-hmm. this is what i need to make myself better mm-hmm. um and so um so it's different mm-hmm. um so i write standalone chapters that are infused together into a book uh and so um both of 
the uh, Educator Reflection Tips books are written like that because I value educators' time. You don't have time to read mm -hmm. like sometimes a book from cover to cover. Right. And so maybe, maybe I just need what's in chapter three. Then I, I tell you, just read chapter three. Right. Get what you need. And then you could pick it up later. But uh, my books, I put 10 tips in each um, chapter. So I tell people it's like reading 10 different books right. in one. Um, I said, um, I would always, uh, I have like lots and lots and lots of books, but I wished that I could get more information out of one book than just having to go to all these different books to find. Right. So those are the types of books that I write. Um, our leadership book is the exact same. Mm -hmm. um, the chapters are written by 10 different people and uh, infused together to actually make a full um, book. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, we gave people like titles like Emotional Equilibrium, Stress Busters, um, Dream Catchers. Like we gave them like titles and we told them, you know, what to write about. Looking right. at the seat versus being in the seat as you, and we had a first year administrator to write about their journey and what it felt like. Mm -hmm. And um, like, that's what everybody feels like though. Right. But uh, if you're 10 years into um, that job, you can't write that chapter. Like you don't remember what it was like. Um, and um, we just wrote about just how it feels to be an administrator coming out of the pandemic uh, huh. uh, and put those things together. But they're all standalone chapters that you could just read just that one chapter or you could read it from cover to cover. Right. Or you could just read just that competency because I need to learn how to um, equalize my emotions, balance my emotions and and have them not affect um, the decisions that I make. Um, am I actually managing my stress properly? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what can I do to reflect every day? Like, it's just, it just depends on like where you are. Um, but I didn't want to uh, write books like everybody else had. Yeah. But um, our time is so precious uh, now. We're always on the go that I wanted to write something that people could really use. Yeah, there, there's actually in the, the, the interesting thing about how, setting up the chapters that way is that you could probably read it, one of the chapters, and then you could probably go back a year later and read the same chapter and it'll do something different for you. Right? Absolutely. So yeah. there's actually, uh, I, I'm reading this book um, right now and it, basically they, they share quotes and so I'm thinking on it. They shared this, I can't remember the quote, but it was uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson and basically said that the reason um, sometimes people like it's good to read books over and over again is the opportunity. Um, it shows you that the book, it's not like the, the author had changed the writing and that's why it resonated with you in a different way that time. It's you've grown, you've learned new things. And then, so like people will actually, um, that read the innovator's mindset will say, Hey, you know, I actually, um, reread it because I just became uh, an administrator. I started this new job, whatever. And it was like such a different perspective this time. But I didn't like it's not like I updated it. It's they updated themselves. Right. Which I, I love. I, the, when you when we were talking before the show uh, and you talked about reflection, it's something I'm really passionate about. And I know this is going to bother you, but I'm going to say because this drove me crazy. And I know how much we were both into it. I remember saying like, you know, like we need to like reflect in our practice. And I remember a teacher saying, I don't have time for reflection. I'm like, that is teaching. Like that is literally part of the process. Like if you don't make, it's like saying, I don't have time for learning. Right. Like that to me is part of that process. So I tried to like embed this. So this is uh, in, in actually um, staff professional learning. So I remember when I was an administrator, uh, one of the things that I did that my staff really appreciated uh, we would have like a, a staff day on a Friday and I would send an email out on a Monday and saying like, hey, here's kind of the schedule for the day. Um, but from nine to 10 o'clock, which would be the start of our day, I'm going to ask you uh, to write a blog post, just talking about something you're doing in your classroom, right? Just talk about something. And at 10 o'clock, we're all going to read each other's stuff. Okay. But, and this is what people loved. I said, but if you want to write that anytime before Friday, you can, um, and then I'll just see you at 10 o'clock. 
right? But if you need support on doing that, we'll be in the library. You can meet us there. So I had people, I'm not even kidding. They would spend like six, seven hours of their own time like doing that so they could sleep in for one hour on Friday. Wow. I love it. it. (laughs) It's kind of interesting because when we were talking before, you said you have a little bit of a weird writing schedule that you like to write literally, like literally in the middle of the night. And so I know some people are like that. I actually, when you were telling me that story, I want to tell you this. Sometimes when I was a principal, like I'd have to like go to the bathroom at like two in the morning and I would just like check my phone and email people. And like, in the, I, and I'd make sure it said like 2 a.m. And they're like, are you up all night? I'm like, oh yeah, I was just working. Just a mess with people. Like I was like up like, like, I was like no, I just had to go pee. Like that was it. So yeah, no, I, I never, I never said, no, no, no. I just went to the bathroom. I was like, oh yeah, I was just doing some stuff. You know, they're like, why are you emailing me at two in the morning? Oh, I was just working on some stuff. <laughs> no, I just had to pee. Oh, so that, yeah. So the. Yeah. So like that was, um, that was one of the ways that I really tried. Cause like you said, the, I, I made time for it as a leader because I, you know, like, Hey, we need to reflect, but we're going to bombard you with information and then you do it on your own time. So like as, as a, a principal, current principal, what are, are there some ways that you kind of build in time for people to reflect, um, you know, in your, on your staff, like where they can actually like have that time for like reflection, because I, I feel we're just so, into collaboration that it's like i just can you just give me some time to process things like can i just think for a second right before you ask me to contribute right so like how how do you look at kind of building that in with your staff uh on uh sundays um i actually send um i write my memo Mm -hmm. and then i turn it into a video um within it i actually ask my staff to reflect we reflect on one data point uh, and then we reflect on um, four instructional uh, practices that we were trying to perfect. So I tell them we never we're shooting for perfection, but we're not there yet. Right. And so um, I try to get them to think about this is what I saw. And I use real pictures of people in the building who are doing it right. Right. And so I embed um a picture if I see a teacher, it could have been just something simple. It could have been us embedding um, some instructional, um, whatever we'll be teaching and instructing into like our morning message for children. Yeah. Some teachers will put some errors in there and if they were teaching uh, punctuation, commas, whatever it was, they'll, they'll infuse that into their message. Mm-hmm. And so the children are looking for those errors. It right. could have been, um, you, um, the teacher that was doing that that math practice where um, all of the children were, are struggling with math across the country. And so she was just using addition so that her children wouldn't feel intimidated when she told them we were dividing. Mm-hmm. Uh, because they could, they could add something right. really simple, really, really simple. It could have been a picture mm-hmm. of children working together um, and say, are you giving children enough time to process the information that you're teaching? Are you just continuously going through your lesson thinking, oh, I got to get this done. I got to finish this lesson today. But children needed more time to work together to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I infused that time. Um, I also moved our collaborative planning to the afternoons Mm -hmm. um, because when you have it during the daytime, um, there's a time constraint. And so we started at 3.30. Um, and they know that, you know, we're stopping at 430, but I found that uh, most weeks they go until five. Sometimes right. they walk out the room and they still down the hall talking to each other because they're still reflecting right. on the conversations that they were having. Um, I always start with reflection questions throughout. So mm-hmm. it makes you think. Um, and they the teachers, I thought they would hate it. I was like, oh, so. So that means we're going to meet every Wednesday after school and they love it because they get to actually see each other and see what's uh, hear what's going on across the grade levels every week. And they absolutely love st- sharing the strategies. Every other week, we just throw out strategies that we're using to help or I'll ask a teacher, do you have a, um, is there a problem of practice we need to talk about basically? So what are you teaching and uh, do you need some tips? on how to uh, get children to understand it. 
And mm -hmm. um, like my newest teachers, it could be the old teachers, like we're working on, on this and my children are not quite getting it. And then the teachers in the other grade levels will say, well, have you tried this right here or that? And it's one of the most powerful mm -hmm. uh, reflective sessions I've ever seen. And it was just, it was just accidental because there just wasn't enough time to get it done during the day. Mm -hmm. But my teachers like really uh, love it. They started without me. If I'm still out there with children at this missile, I walked in. They're like, we already started. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, like they're doing it on their own now. I love that. And yes, but yeah. They, 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 the thing with reflection is that it is a it is a process of looking back, right? It is a process of looking back, but the reality of it is, it is it is the idea of looking back so you can move forward, yes. right? And like that, the, a lot of people think that when you kind of focus on those things, you're not actually like because obviously my passion is in innovation, and it's kind of looking through this process, looking through these things to actually kind of move forward. And the, one of the things I I really am adamant about is that we are not constantly trying to embrace the newest things all the time because I'm like, we need to get good at some of the older things that we're trying to focus on. And if you don't give us time to like process to kind of dig deep, then you're just hitting surface level stuff, right? And as soon as you hit the surface level, um, and then we move on to the next thing, we become good at nothing, right? And that that's a, that's a, really, that's a really tough process. Um, one of the things that we try to do is really kind of build in uh, reflection into the day for our students. And I remember um, there was a teacher I worked with and just admire her. Her name's Kelly Holden. She would actually do, um, she would have like uh, blog parties. <laughs> right. It was kind of, I don't know. Was, I just loved it. And she would actually, she would actually, um, she would actually, um, do uh just like you know i'm sure you've i don't know if you, you call it the same thing in 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 tennessee uh we do drop everything and read kids get like 15, 20 minutes of time to yes. read yes which i think is great right but i actually think like hey um we need to actually uh it's not like that's a lot of input but where's the output right so we started talking about so actually one of the things i talked about in innovators mindset was drop everything and reflect can we use a couple of those times where we're actually talking about some of the things. And so what Kelly Holden would do is she would actually have these blog parties and kids would just write about things that they're, you know, talking about. But what I loved about this is Kelly, the teacher, just like other teachers who would read in front of the books, you read books in front of kids because it's good role modeling. She would actually write in front of the kids about stuff in her own practice during class time. So she would implement that as a practice. So like, hey, if it's really good modeling to read in front of the kids, why is it not also good modeling to write in front of the kids? And so that was one of the ways that she, it was like she did it alongside of the kids. So she wouldn't actually I know it's kind of like it's kind of like a little cheat. I think it's great is that instead of doing it after school, do it during school with the kids like that is part of the learning. So that was like one of the ways that we really kind of got students doing that is getting them to see the teacher doing that. So what are some of the ways that you're like working with students so they implement that? Because Reflection is not only good for educators. It doesn't matter where you go into like what profession. I think it's beneficial to everything that we do. So what are some ways that, you know, maybe your students, you know, implement reflection into their, into their, you know, their, their school practice? I ask them to, um, I do a video announcements. So every morning um, I embed like pictures of things that happened the previous day and we reflect on those. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes it is a, I've done like words of the month. So our word was respect. And so I'll take pictures of children actually doing those things or being responsible. Um, I embed pictures sometimes of children. I call it a student spotlight. And it's not always the children who are doing it right. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I spotlight, I spotlighted a student about three weeks ago, um, we we're trying to learn our multiplication facts. And so I would, we'll do like three minute quizzes. And so I walked in and all of the children who got everything right, they were like, oh, oh, that's what I got it right. I got it right. I got it right. And so I walked over to this, um, you know, I walked to all the children. One student, she walked up and she was like, um, so here's my paper, Miss White. I didn't get them all right. 
but I'm getting better at it. And so I'm going to work towards uh, learning all of my multiplication facts. But but here's my paper to show you the ones that I did get right today. And um, and instead of spotlighting the students who got it 100, I actually spotlighted her. And I told the children I'm spotlighting her because she knew that her paper wasn't perfect, but she said she was working towards um, learning all of her multiplication facts. And that's what we all want to do. Like, we won't always get it right the first time, but I love that she um, she continues to try. And mm -hmm. so I want everybody to try this. I want you to think about what you didn't get right yesterday, like, and what can right. you continue to try and work for today. Um, I also do um, a virtual read aloud with them, and I give them a question to reflect on as they listen to it. Um, and mm -hmm. then as I walk throughout the hall, the children will tell me, like, you know, what they thought about the story or what the question was. Um, I'll sometimes give them an activity and say, hey, why don't you write your own uh, poem? Or um, we could all write a book together if you turn in, everybody could write one page at a time uh, just to get them to reflect. Um, I'll ask the teachers to um, begin their day by asking every child, like on a Monday, like how was their weekend? Say so you may be, um, you never know what, what happened, like, mm -hmm. and so help them learn how to process like their emotions, see what happens. And when we start our day like that, like nothing trickles to the office or anything because right. we already knew what kind of day the child had. They may just need a hug this morning, like, because right. right. you don't know what happened over the weekend. And so we try to like build that into like our daily practices. Um, I have a team that stands outside and we literally open the car doors for the children so that we can see mm -hmm. what, you know, their body language, tell them good morning. We're happy to see them. Give them a hug if that's what they need, because you just don't know. Um, and when children tell the teacher sometimes about what they went through, like we're reflective on how. Mm -hmm privileged we are to like have everything that we do we do have like we just you just i tell people you just never know mm. when you think you're having a bad day just check in with your neighbor and see what right. see what's going on in their life and i promise you it, it actually will make you feel so much better about just the things that you thought were just troubling and challenging they're not because mm. someone else is always going through something that's a whole lot bigger um, you, you know, it's, I, I swear this is the weirdest thing. I was just on I was just on TikTok like this morning and somebody posted that they said uh, my mom said whenever we had problems, if we got everybody to throw their problems all into the same pile and you saw what everyone else had, you probably would take your stuff back. Like, 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 I literally saw that this morning, which is weird because I'm like, did you do that TikTok? Because that's literally what I'm <laughs> wasn't about. me. Yeah. It wasn't me, but it is so true. <laughs> so true. So you know, um, the the thing that I I think um, is really powerful and is kind of emitted in this, you know, in this this uh, podcast interview is uh, reflection seems to be like a very like almost like a like a selfish thing. It's about you, right? Like. But really, when you go through the process, it actually makes those around you better. It makes you more empathetic, more understanding. We were talking about even before the podcast that um, I'm very cognizant when I, when I put stuff down, when I'm doing a podcast, when I'm doing writing a blog post, that I'm trying to think of other perspectives because when you put it out there in the, the world, uh, like, I, you know, I, I don't want to, I, I, as much as, I'm open to criticism. I don't want to be criticized. So I actually want to say like, okay, how am I addressing the possible issues with this too? Right. And so the thing that I appreciate about spending time with you today, I, I have actually, so every time I like I turn and look for you, I'm like writing down new ideas. Like I'm like writing down a bunch of stuff. And so like your reflections that you're sharing that help you have made me better. And it's actually, we were talking, I can't, now I can't even remember because it's all a blur. We were talking about like some things have changed. Like you started being a principal during COVID. I started this podcast right before COVID. And it was just meant for me to, to just like 
uh, you know, just share my thoughts. But then COVID happened. I'm like, okay, that's like a little too much of George's thoughts. I should start inviting other people. And I become so much better because of podcast interviews like today. Like, I just so appreciate you spending time with me. I, I actually, I, I, I've known you forever. This is the first time I've ever got to sit down and talk to you. And I just, I'm like, how do I not, how have we not talked before? I, I don't know. <laughs> You're stuck with me now too, right? Yeah, I'm, that's yeah it. absolutely. Oh, anytime, that's anytime, anytime you want. I love it. So Jamie, thanks so much for being on. Like, I, I, I feel it, if you aren't better after this, con people listen to this conversation, I don't know what to do for you. Cause like, I feel so much better after this. Right. So oh. I feel, I actually, I'm not gonna lie. I feel very validated for stuff I've been talking about too for a while. So, yeah. Thank you for having me. Jamie, I hope you have a good Saturday. I hope, uh, I know you don't watch sports as much as I do, but I hope Tennessee wins just cause. Yes. Yes. Right? yes. They're so. going to win. They're going to win. <laughs> Hey, everyone. Thanks for being here today, Jamie. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, all the best to you, and I look forward to talking to you again. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Bye, everybody.